Comrade, Right Honorable Oyanapa, Political Leader of this great marvelous little party, Leader of Hermansi's Loyal Opposition, Acting Chairman of the party, Comrade Dr. Jerome Walker, Current General Secretary, members of the Executive Council and National Council of the Barbados Naval Party. Madam President, members of the St. Michael Northwest family of the Barbados Naval Party, and indeed the wider St. Michael Northwest community. Distinguished members of Parliament, present and past, comrades, ladies and gentlemen, I want to begin by acknowledging Ladies and gentlemen, my parents. <laughs> Let me begin by acknowledging the inestimable grace and bountiful blessings the Almighty has bestowed on us all here this evening. I was touched by David, your remembering my brother who passed away at 22 years old this, this year. But we still must give thanks to the Almighty for help, strength, and for wisdom and understanding. I want to acknowledge my parents, Bert and Norma, who have done a wonderful job in raising us as children and instilling in us many of the good qualities that you heard referred to by David and by Cynthia this evening. I want to acknowledge my wife, Misha, and my daughters, Adara and Zara. They are on their way, but my wife has a habit of being late. <laughs> but the, the, the baby fell off the bed a little earlier this afternoon and gave us a little scare, but she's all right now. I, I have to acknowledge her because without her support, I would not have been able to make this sergeant. I am humbled by this opportunity to represent this constituency because of the confidence and trust you have reposed in me in this rescue mission. To battle this Democratic Labour Party out of office. This is the most inept an incompetent government in the history of modern Barbados. The manner in which Barbados has been allowed to slide from the world's leading developing nation to dump in the path with the rest in three and a half years is most surprising. I willingly join the Right Honorable Oinapa and this fantastic team in the Barbados Labour Party on what I hope is only a rescue mission. Because I always felt that he could not destroy Barbados and certainly Erskine Sanford tried, but he didn't destroy Barbados. But if we have to go past another two years of this Democratic Labour Party administration, ours will not be a rescue mission. It would be a recovery mission. We only don't have to wait and hope that the budget that is pending will not put more on the backs of the people than they can bear. I hope that the Minister of Finance will spare the country from the IMF style budget. I also hope that the Minister of Finance will not bring a Harley Henry style budget full of election promises because certainly the country cannot spare the largest of the final gap again. When we thought the Sanford administration was the worst, we now have the Thompson and Prandell Stewart administration to deal with. As the Right Honorable Wenapa said, looking at the government's performance and handling of the economy is like watching a horror movie in slow motion. Not only is the government too large, 19 ministers. We now have a minister of dreams. How low can you get? <laughs> the government is also ineffective and inept. 
They pass legislation that cannot work. They announce policies in the budget that cannot be operated. This is a government that does not level with the people as the true state of the economy of Barbados. Public servants in the Ministry of Finance are saying that the weekly reports on the economy have not been read since Oinaka left the Ministry of Finance. That is what people are saying, the public servants in the Ministry are saying. This government will not honestly tell the people how we are going to deal with the fiscal deficit. And it is not the physical deficit as Jet to Inks, Senator Jet to Inks, has repeatedly been saying. But I'm not surprised that he would call it the physical deficit. He was at Clico, a doctor drive him in the Ministry of Finance. And I'm only hoping that the fortunes of the, the, the policyholders at Clico are not the same fortunes of the taxpayers of this country if Jeff has anything to do with it. This is a government that with all the brouhaha went to parliament quite recently to pass the Human Resources Development Strategy. And if it's one thing that came out of that debate is that the Minister of Finance did not make any provision in this year's estimates to finance any of the programs. So they cannot be trusted in relation to the policies that they enunciate. This is a government that creates the law at the Transport Board, at the Water Authority, and now at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. This is a government that will pass legislation after midnight in order to get a chief justice in place in this country. Dog wall on. After a long week of estimates debates, the Jacobi debate after midnight. This is what this government is doing. And the word is that the legislation that they have amended is not sufficient to get the man in the job. This is a government that allows ministers to travel on board private planes owned by people in the private sector who want to do government with the, with, on behalf of the people of Barbados. And this, all of this is going on, and Barbadians remain quiet. But I'm calling on you, the supporters and members of the Barbados Day Party, to remain steadfast. Remain committed to the resolve of making life better for our people. This is a government that promised declarations of assets of ministers, ministers' assets before they take the oath of office. This is a government that keeps secret the report of the judicial manager in relation to the operations at Clico and British America. This is a government that allowed the mandate of the Oversight Committee to run out. But what do we hear from Chris Sinclair and Brenda Stewart? Paris is our friend. He is not a corporate leper. And David Thompson, when the whole thing started, said that Clico was well managed and well run. Well, if David Thompson's statement is prophetic, I hope the same vision and foresight he had to say that Clico was well run is not how he felt about the Barbados economy. This government refuses to pay our bar, and the interest on the judgment as awarded by the court runs on a daily basis that we as taxpayers have to pay. But by collapsing to dismiss Albert's claim as being frivolous and vexatious. This is the sort of government that we have, not a government of law, but a government of men. <laughs> this government promised to remove back off of electricity bills. This government promised to reduce the cost of living. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But they now have resorted to tax effects at Propova, bicycles, lottery tickets, and cell phones in order to raise revenue. And the more taxes they impose, the less revenue the government collects. This is a tax and spend government. It has no conception as to how to grow an economy. It has no conception about making it possible for businesses to do business and employ people. That's right. This government is only interested in re remaining in government right. and not doing a single piece of work in order to make life better for the people of this country. 
We have in this constituency a man that is motivated by one thing and one thing alone, becoming Prime Minister. He had a good mentor in David Thompson. Chris Sinclair is walking about Barbados, trying to convince his colleagues to adopt Prime Minister as Prime Minister, so that he can become Prime Minister. That is his motivation. And I say to you, we are in the worst economic crisis in the history of this country. And Chris Sinclair is the Minister of Finance. And for the first time in the history of this country, we have a Minister of Finance not engaging in the serious task of managing the economy, trying to get the economy back on a growth path, trying to make sure that people get back to work, businesses start hiring again. He is interested in becoming the Prime Minister of Barbados. So he gets his friend from university to do a bogus poll, trying to catapult him ahead of the Prime Minister. So this democratic party does not sit down as an administration looking out for your interests. They occupy, govern, and they're looking out for themselves. It's sound familiar? Yeah. You remember that at a time when the Minister of Finance and the DLP administration in the past was fighting for the, the Prime Minister, who was the MP for St. Michael South? You remember that? It is happening again right before our eyes. But Chris Sinclair enjoys his status of being Minister of Finance. He enjoys the spotlight. He's going to revel in the spotlight of standing up in front of you for three and a half hours. A lot of focus, focus, big talk, and fancy gimmicks. Classic party hearing strategy. But not a word about how we will improve this economy. He is the worst minister that has ever served in governing Barbados. And I don't say that because I am running against him. I am trained to make a judgment based on the facts. What are the facts? He first went to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Foreign Trade and International Business. And David Thompson gave him Donald Innes as a junior minister. And given his qualifications and his experience, we thought that at least Chris Sinclair would have come out a shiny rose to lead that large ministry that Thompson gave him. That ministry is not three ministries now, though. But when Chris Sinclair got it, it was at a very interesting time. The world was going through many challenges, many changes were being moved in the structure of global institutions. Barbados had begun the negotiations with an economic partnership agreement with Europe, concluded under Chris Sinclair's stewardship. So he had all reason given his background in political science, his training, because he recently completed a master's in international trade policy thanks to the foresight of going after to help build up the University of the West Indies in terms of increasing its course offerings, especially at the postgraduate level. He got that free under the Barbers Day Party administration. So he was up to date with all of the intricate details of trade policy negotiations. So as part of Cary Forum, Barbados signed on to the EPO. But under Chris Sinclair as a Minister of Finance, not one single policy initiative has come out of that event. We signed the EPO. He was Minister of Foreign Affairs, and not a single word. No service sector in Barbados can say that it met with our Minister of Foreign Trade to help this discuss how we can now start to engage the European market given the more restricted terms of the economic partnership agreement. We are or were, when he was the Minister of Foreign Trade, beginning to discuss our relationship with Canada 
and capital one is a WTO compliant or WTO plus trading arrangement. And Canada has always been one of Barbados' biggest trading partners. Not a word from Chris Sinclair. So just like Sanford in 1994, when he signed the WTO agreement, which ushered in trade liberalization in a massive way in this country, Barbados are yet to hear from this young man trained in all of the relevant disciplines discuss how this country can navigate in these turbulent international wars. There was no person better qualified to lead this discussion in this country. We have a conservative government in place in Canada. And because of their need to increase their tax revenue, we can expect a fight to dismantle our international business sector. Not a word from your Minister of Finance, and not a word from him when he was the Minister of Foreign Trade and International Business. This is his performance as a minister. But he begged Thompson, beseeched Thompson, to put him in the Ministry of Social Care and Urban and Rural Development to boot. So he will become the head butcher to cut up the fallen cow. <laughs> and that is where his most telling performance has been in the Ministry of Social Care. That is where he has done all of the work and one of the biggest travesties that I have seen. All of you who are public workers have to bear this in mind. He seconded Derek Allen. He resigned from the Senate, went to the Urban Development Commission. Derek Allen is an assistant or was an assistant general secretary. Is so by seconded at the National Union of Public Workers. And the public workers' salaries pay him. And his first task was to restructure the Urban Development Commission. He said, home everybody that he felt that had connections with the Barbados Day of I am doing six cases in the court, of which we have judgment law for people who have been wrongfully terminated by the UDC, the National Assistance Board, the Rural Development Commission, all across the statutory corporations. That is what they have done. They will fire my wife. This is the Democratic Party right government. He brought legislation to Parliament to introduce constituency councils. And you will remember last year, every Sunday, every Sunday, the Democrat Labour Party would walk around having constituency council meetings. And all they did was to abuse the Barbies Labour Party. But they can't face the people now. They used to drive CBC to take these meetings and record them live on radio. Where are these constituency meetings and reports and assemblies now? They are hiding. Yes. But this is the game plan of Persinger. He moved on to the Ministry of Finance. Thompson put him there when Thompson was on his dying bed. Not to restore Barbados' economy on a growth path. Not to deal with an out of step fiscal deficit. Not to put people back to work and restore prosperity in the land. But this part, the Henry design strategy, because well, you heard Henry at the funeral, he called all the shots. And all of them that sit down with Thompson Cabinet, they should be shamed to hear that admission. But you know what? None of them denied it. So I heard Henry call all the shots. But you can ask like Master, because he met with Hartley Henry. When they were looking at the outside and told like we needed somebody who was more media savvy and who had the appearance and the cut of a prime minister. 
That is why they get rid of Klein. Not because Klein Maskell did not have the capacity to lead the Democratic Labour Party or the Barbados economy, but it was more a question about appearance. And this is all that Chris Sinclair is interested in. And Clyde, I want to say tonight, thank you for endorsing me in this session. A man who has been, whose character has been wrongfully produced by the accolades of Chris Sinclair. I can be really proper because this is only the beginning. So we have a Minister of Finance, ladies and gentlemen, well trained in the science of politics and the art of political theater. Going around from breakfast meeting and conferences and making a lot of loose statements about ways to strain, but refusing to engage the sectors of Barbados in real serious discussion. But the Chris Sinclair plan, ladies and gentlemen, is what we want to hear about. I you know the Clemsonian has actually captured it. You hear what the clerk said? I I would not be surprised if there's no budget anytime soon. <laughs> because they did not expect within three and a half years. The people, the people's forum that is Calypso to deal with it in that way. I remember we asked my pause for a bend in the river. It begins with a beautiful opening. The world is what it is and men who are nothing and men who allow themselves to be nothing have no place in it. The Democratic Party are saying that the challenges that faces this country are externally driven. That they cannot do anything about the international economy. So the government is like poor this by a Wash their hands and say, the suffering of the people have nothing to do with me. We cannot allow ourselves to be nothing. We cannot allow Barbados to be nothing. We demand and deserve a government that goes to work every day in the interest of our people. <laughs> what motivates this Barbados Labour Party? is different from what motivates the Democratic Labour Party. Oh. Right. And this Democratic Labour Party, the lines of hell, and despite the loss of the government in 2008, your presence here this evening, in your numbers, oh my God. Oh my God. when most people fed in down, Soka Royale have no problem with that. But look at the numbers in here tonight. Hardly a chair in here. Tells us where we are going. Those of you who are looking forward to the budget, you're not going to get any return of your entertainment and travel allowances. You're not going to get the tax deduction for mutual funds and credit units. You're not going to get the back of all the electricity bills. You're not going to get an ease in petroleum taxes because the government can cut the excise tax that it rates in because that is put on top the cost of the petrol and the excise tax. They're not going to cut that. The government is not going to tell you in the minister's statement what is the true position on Kiko and whether any financial infelicities occurred during the time when the mandate of the oversight committee expired. They're not going to hear the minister of finance speak in his wrap up, answer any questions about the judicial manager's report. You're not going to hear this government that spoke about transparency and accountability explain why it can sign confidentiality agreements in relation to the Rihanna concert. And I really and sincerely hope that those persons who were responsible for the situation at Kiko have nothing to do with the Rihanna concert. All of us Barbados people are whispering so. But I'm saying tonight that I really and sincerely hope that at the back and the end of those confidentiality agreements, the people who had 
everything to do with the ways of people had nothing to do, have nothing to do with this concept. I hope they don't have any interest in any company that is selling the sweets at Kensington and selling tickets at those enormous prices. I really hope so. I hope then the that settles that this government that is interested in transparency and accountability will expand whether or not a man who was getting a salary of $80,000 a month or $3 million in bonus every year and suing the same people at this present time has any interest at all in any of the companies that are dealing with the Rihanna Council. But this is the Barbados under the Democratic Labour Party that we can expect. And I say to you, I have come to politics at a very young age. I firmly believe that politics has to be the vehicle to achieve the improvement of our people's material welfare. I welcome the opportunity to go up the steps of Parliament and turn to the left. I went up the steps already and turned to the right. But the seating in the left hand side is more comfortable. It appears so to me. We have a job to do. And I was walking down the street last week and my turn, my hair running against a jet. I said, a jet? What jet are you talking about? Somebody Chris is a jet. I said, Janet don't win by 270 votes in a swing. Janet's win by thousands of votes. <laughs> we took a team of people yesterday in Free Hill, an area that has traditionally been very difficult for the Barbados their party. And let, let Orange tell you our, the response we got in Free Hill. Let them tell you the response we got in Free Hill. The don't want to see Sinclair? No. At all. <laughs> If you like Westerns, I can tell you this. You remember Tombstone? Yes. Where? Yes. Tell Chris Sickler that I am coming. And hell is coming with me. Let us win the country of this menacing law. Let us win the country of this corrupt government. Let us win the country of this government that does not engage in the difficult issues with the people of Barbados. Let us win the country of this government that is only interested in with the rest. Let us put the Democratic Labour Party back in opposition where they belong. I resolve tonight to work every day in and out to bring this seat back in the column of the Barbados. And I know it will be a hit struggle because Clyde Master lost his seat and got more votes than any Barbies in the party candidate has ever gotten in this constituency and still lost his seat. So there are a lot of people who voted for Clyde Master that did not ordinarily vote for their party in the next election. I only want to match Clyde's numbers. If I can do better, Bernie, God bless you. God bless you. You don't mind me saying, save for a night. Save for a night. She is a client of mine. I mean, I've given up on her. Jerome said, no, I can work on her. He saved for a night. I pledge to you, the people of St. Michael Northwest, I am not going to buy your vote. When I was in Trinidad as a student, the Trinidadians used to say if you're biting for food, you sell me for water. No big interest will motivate me. Nobody with any deep pockets is standing up behind me. I am going to meet people. I have always met people. 
Some people like this, some don't like it, but I know more people like me than hate me. I am going into the constituency and I meet everybody on the level. And I am sure that I will be home debating in this constituency. I want to say this. As your member of parliament, I made a pledge that I will not go into the house to discuss any major issue without consulting the constituents that I represent. That is absent in the political landscape, and I really hope it finds its way into the manifesto policy of the Barber State Department. That this party uses these meetings not only to report on our performance, but to engage and discuss the, 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 the large pieces of legislation that make fundamental changes in the way in which we do business in this country, discuss it in plenary session with the people of the country. I pledge to engage the private sector and the NGO community in this constituency to develop projects to help people. And I'm not talking about only putting up play parks and that kind of thing. I'm talking about projects that will help and learn and nurture and develop the sporting talent of the young boys and girls within this constituency. Because I fundamentally believe that sports, arts, and music, and those kinds of things can make a positive impact on the lives of young people. I grew up with music around me, and was trained in music, and I grew up playing sport, although my sporting talent was less than the ambition that I had. <laughs> but I do believe that we need to channel more resources into sporting development, to develop young people. Not everybody's not going to play great for the West team or get a contract playing premiership football. But we're talking about developing wholesome young people. Regular members of the society willing to make a contribution. And that is what we have to start doing. Building the communities around us. Not dumping thousands of dollars on election day and cannot go back to the constituency a year later because people are suffering. And the people who finance the campaign not in a position to help you help the people's problems. I pledge to be a loyal and faithful member of this Barbados State Party. And I will walk the length and breadth of this country and spread the message that this Democratic Labour Party administration has to go back in opposition where it belongs. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming here. Thank you for listening to me. Good night, and God bless you all. Are you Labour warriors come? Roll call! Down we go! Down, 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 we can let them down, down, down. Down, 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 we can let them down, down, down. Them down, them down. Down, 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 we can let them down, down, down.